What's up guys, welcome back. So on this episode, we're gonna go ahead and do what everybody keeps asking us and show you a tutorial on how to turbocharge your inline six M103 Mercedes. If your car has this same engine, this process is gonna be the exact same for you. So this is the engine we're gonna be turbocharging right here. So these right here are gonna be the tools you're gonna to need to disassemble the engine and get it ready for the turbo. We have a 13 mil ratcheting wrench, an adjustable wrench, quite a few extensions to get that exhaust off. We have a 13 mil short socket, a 12 mil deep socket, and then a 10 mil short socket with a swivel. We have our 3 8 ratchet, a flat head, a pair of pliers, a pair of cutters, obviously our drill, a tap, and then our drill bits. All right, so to start this process, what I like to do is work my way from the right and then go left and then start at the top and then work my way at the bottom. So first thing is first, we need to get this big old air box out of the way. You have three 10 millimeter bolts. There's one right there. There's gonna be one right there. And then the last one, unfortunately we don't have because our mounting point is broken but it usually sits about right here, right on there. So you're gonna take those three off, you're gonna pull out a vacuum line that my car does not have, and then you're gonna obviously take your pliers, pinch this so you could take it off. All right, now that that is out of the way, we don't have to do anything else on the cold side yet. We're gonna go ahead and work our way to this side. We're gonna pull out each spark plug wire and we're gonna fold them over the radiator support in the front of the engine just so that way they're out of the way. All right, now that all of our spark plug wires are out of the way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and come to the exhaust bolts. These are gonna be 12 millimeter. You're gonna use your 12 millimeter ratchet with your long socket and you're gonna break all of these loose. After all of these are loose, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go underneath the car and then you're going to be taking off the bolts that are in here that are actually holding the exhaust to the manifold. Those are going to be 13 millimeter bolts, though you're going to be using all of your extensions to go ahead and try and grab all those off. All right, so now that we have most of the bolts out, what I like to do is keep only two, obviously loosen them, but I like to keep two bolts on the manifold so that way you can take off your exhaust down here like I said these are going to be 13 mil on the end of each of these and that's where you're going to be needing all of those extensions all right so this right here is how I set up mine obviously one small one a medium one and then a long one with a swivel and then a 13 mil okay so now that you're under the car they're pretty, they're pretty easy to get to. Mine are already taken out, but as you can see, you're going to get those two there. Then you're going to come around this side. Get that one there. That one there. Okay, so right here you're going to grab your adjustable wrench and your 13 mil. You're going to go ahead and break these guys loose right here and take them off. Then you're going to be grabbing the 22 mil wrench and then taking this off or O2 sensor socket. Okay, so after everything drops, you take you unplug the exhaust. It falls off. You're going to come back to your four bolts you left in the block and you're going to go ahead and take those off. Okay, so now that the exhaust is off and the manifold is off, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and keep this side open for a while. And we're going to go ahead and drain the oil. So you have to take off the oil filter. And then there is a 13 millimeter right there to drain the oil. All right, so after you do the oil change, this is a 13 millimeter, by the way. You're going to go ahead and drain your oil. All 
All right, so while you let that drain, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take off your oil filter. This is my oil filter. I use a reusable oil filter because I'm not planning on getting rid of my car anytime soon. What you can do is you're gonna take off your oil filter. What is that? What is that? So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna go ahead and grab your oil filter sandwich with your oil feed line. Mine is already attached, it's thread and it's already done. You're going to be grabbing your 3 4 sixteenths, and that's gonna go right on top like this. And then you're gonna put that guy right back. All right, what you're gonna to wanna to do is obviously stick this guy back here like that. You're gonna take your oil filter sandwich you're gonna pop that guy right back here just like that all right now this part isn't necessary but obviously I'm going to do it because I kind of like to have my stuff a little bit more neat you're gonna loosen these two 10 mils right here you're gonna move these guys out of the way And then like I said, this isn't necessary. This is just something I'm gonna do. You're gonna get your 3 8 Don't know if you can see that. You're gonna get your 3 8 And then you're gonna go ahead and pop that guy right back in, just like that. another one so I'm gonna pop this guy right in there okay so now that we have our oil feed line set up our oil filter sandwich our oil filter and everything back on all of the oil is officially drained out of the bottom of the pan I'm gonna go ahead and show you a very important step this is huge you cannot let me repeat that you cannot tap your oil pan for your oil drain at the bottom of the pan you cannot tap it the wall is too small it will not work it will come out I don't want to see these things losing oil or you guys having to do so much more work so this is going to be a super easy step uh, that's going to save you a lot of headache and I guess problems in the future all right guys so to do this job what you're going to need is all of this right here you're going to need a 45 or 90 degree pair of pliers you're going to need a 10 an oil drain an extension magnet a 3 8 ratcheting wrench a short or small extension a 10 an a 13 an a punch obviously your drill bits a drill gun and then just some brake grease, just some regular brake grease. <laughs> okay, so with your oil already being drained, what you're gonna need to do is come to the driver's side of your engine and you're gonna unplug your oil level sensor. Here's the bolts right here. Okay, so after you take off those 210 mil, go ahead and grab your needle nose and pop that guy right out just like that. This right here, you're going to want to go ahead and pull forward a little bit, slide it right out. And that's what it's going to look like. Okay, so now that you're on the passenger side of the vehicle, you see the oil pan. What I like to do is get the washer that I'm going to be using and putting it up to where obviously I have to drill my hole. So this one. obviously needs to get drilled I would say about right there
Next what you're going to do is you're obviously going to get your drill bit, your drill gun. Find where obviously you need to drill your hole. Okay, so after you drill your hole, like I said, you're going to measure this a few times. Mine officially goes in, just like it's supposed to. I'm going to test fit it with a washer. And everything seems to be great. Okay, now that we have a bunch of metal shavings inside of our oil pan, what you're going to want to do is take your microfiber towels, just one towel at a time, and take a microfiber towel and you're going to shove it in the hole. Just going to shove it in there. And the reason you're going to do that is because then you're going to be grabbing your 45 degree angle pliers. <laughs> you're going to push it in there. You're going to push the microfiber towel all over the bottom of the oil pan. You're going to want to try to clean it up the best you possibly can. Get all the shavings. The reason we use a microfiber towel is because the microfiber will grab every little tiny piece of aluminum really really nice then what you're going to do is you're just going to grab the microfiber towel and pull it out Next, what you're going to do is grab your 10 AN nut and you're going to put it in the brake grease so that way when you go to put this inside of the socket, it doesn't fall at the bottom of the oil pan. If it does, you can obviously fish it out with the 45 degree needle nose pliers, but as you can see, the nut shouldn't go anywhere if you do this trick. It works great. Next, you're going to be grabbing your socket with the nut on it, your long extension, and putting it inside of the oil pan where the oil lever sensor was. You're just basically going to push it all the way across until it goes to the other side, and then you're going to start threading on your 10 AN fitting so that way it's nice and tight. Okay, now that you took all the metal shards out of the oil pan, you're going to go ahead and put your oil level sensor back in. Don't forget to put those two 10 millimeter bolts back in and check the gasket as needed. Okay, so as you can see, we now have the manifold bolted on. We have our turbo feed line hooked up. We have our turbo drain hooked up. And the turbo is mounted. I obviously did not show you how to put on the manifold because well it's very self-explanatory you literally just put it on and you screw the bolts on again those are 12 mils the reason I didn't tell you this size or the size at the bottom for the drain is because obviously a lot of feed lines are going to be different I okay so next we're going to go ahead and do the exhaust as you can see this guy is welding it up right here getting that all taken care of the exhaust is only going to be coming back so far. We're going to probably have it stop right behind the subframe. As you can see about right here. And then that's going to be it for that. So while he was doing the exhaust, I went ahead and did the intake pipe with the blow-off valve. We are not going to be running an intercooler. We will be using water methanol injection because it gets extremely hot here in Arizona. The exhaust is done though. It's put back all the way to the subframe just how I wanted it. It looks great. <laughs> 